Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith and welcome to my review of the new movie, The Dark Tower. This of course is based on a series of books by author Stephen King, books that I did not read, but books that have a huge following behind them. As a matter of fact, there have been so many people who have been involved with this film's development that it started and stopped and started and stopped so many times over the past decade or so. J.J. Abrams was tied to this movie, backed out. Ron Howard was tied to this movie, backed out. But it's okay because they got Nikolai Arkell to direct it. And don't worry, if you've never heard of Nikolai Arkell, neither have I. But respectfully, at one point, I'd never heard of Spike Lee. I'd never heard of Quentin Tarantino. Steven Spielberg got to start somewhere. Anyways, in this movie, we're basically dealing with good versus evil. On the good side, we've got Idris Elba playing the gunslinger. The big guy who's like got good in his heart and wants to right the wrongs. Then on the other side, we've got the man in black played by Matthew McConaughey. A guy who's like a Jedi because he can just say things and mind trip you and get you to do crazy things like kill other people or just stop breathing. They're on a collision course. They're on a collision course not only because I tell you that they are, but because what brings them together is this young boy. A young boy who's got these powers where he can basically, he's basically dreaming and is, you know, has these stories in his head, stories that seem to be so true, but everybody thinks he's just losing his mind. Well, he's not losing his mind. And as he crosses over into another world, he comes face to face with the gunslinger and the man in black. So because it's Stephen King, you think to yourself, okay, this is probably a horror film. Nay, nay, it's actually fantasy. The problem is, is that i thinking that not only did I not read the books, but the director probably didn't either because I don't think people who are big fans of this series are going to feel that the film did it justice. It's about 90, 95 minutes long, so it does feel somewhat rushed in parts, but also it seems like it's an extremely watered down version of the series. Now, it's impossible to get eight books into a 95 minute film, but I don't even think that this is a good origin story or a good background. There was really nothing in this film that made me excited about what could potentially come in other, in other movies. No, I sat back and I thought to myself, well, Idris Elba proves once again that he can do a lot with a little. He isn't given a lot of great material, but the material he, he is given, he does a lot with. Matthew McConaughey is okay as the man in black, but I like the role better when Al Pacino played it in The Devil's Advocate. Matthew McConaughey is a great actor, I take nothing away from him, but this isn't gonna be one of those movies that comes to the top of the list when you think of his work. You know, a lot of times, for example, you'll see Christopher Nolan movies and you'll hear from the guy who directed the Dark Knight trilogy and Interstellar. You're not gonna see a Matthew McConaughey movie and say, you hear, oh, from the guy who was in The Dark Tower, no. Idris Elba can take the hit on this film because you know, his star is shining so bright, and this is a guy that's being talked about as the next James Bond. Matthew McConaughey can take the hit on this movie because he has so many fantastic films behind him. The person that won't be able to take the hit on this is Nikol Nikolai Arkell, and this might be a one and done for him. I'd be very surprised if a studio trusts him with a big blockbuster in the future, but I could be wrong. Looking at the poster of this, you thought to yourself, okay, they're walking down the street and the world seems upside down. This seems kind of uh, Doctor Strange, it seems kind of Inception. And the fact, at the end of the day, it's neither. I'd be very interested to hear what people who are actually fans of this book series think, because what I thought was it was very, very poorly done. And unfortunately, it wasn't in the hands of a veteran director. It seemed to be put in the hands, with all due respect, of a novice who just didn't seem to know what to do. And to that, I give it a C minus. If you have the chance to see The Dark Tower, let me know what you think. CFL underscore fan on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier and Witty Whittier.com. Thank you so much for checking this out. My name is Keith, and I'll see you at the movies.